It's all well and good saying God loves me, but what does that look like? Is the love of God in Christ just about his death on the cross? Why should that matter to me? These questions and more we'll be exploring in this episode of Word Search with me, Christopher Dryden, where we're on episode 21, Jesus' Love. That serves you right. Welcome to Word Search, a place to search God's Word and a time for God's Word to search us. This is to encourage godly character development that stimulates us to prioritize seeking God's kingdom first and his righteousness with the mind that it should inform and transform our prayer and practice. For here at Word Search, we look to find treasure in God's word so that we can be hearers and doers of that word for his glory. Coming up on this episode of Word Search, we'll consider the story so far in God's fit body plan before our main scripture reading in Ephesians, and then we'll explore in detail what is the love of God in Christ, how it first reaches and it serves. We'll then have some concluding points on those issues, including our prayer points to consider, before letting you know what you can expect next here on Word Search. Previously on Word Search, we're exploring God's fit body plan, and that's based on a reading of Ephesians. We've had an overview on the belief that every believer is a member of the body of Christ, and that means they have an important role. Every member has an important role to play in serving as God wants them to serve. From an overview of Ephesians, we zoomed into Ephesians chapter 4, where Paul outlines for the church in Ephesus how crucial it is to know that Jesus has given five particular gifts, five particular leadership gifts for the building of the body and the equipping of the saints to do the works of ministry. From those five key crucial body parts of the apostle, the prophet, the evangelist, the shepherd and the teacher, we then looked at the reality that the body functions and grows in love. And that's led us to consider what is God's kind of love. From an overview of the perfect love of God, we explored God's love from the beginning as seen in creation and God's redemptive plan even when man sinned. In the previous episode we explored how God's love is one you can rely on as seen through God's covenantal relationship with his people Israel. How it's a faithful love that endures all circumstances and it's the kind of love that we too can express as we put our trust in him. If you want to find out more about the episodes that have led up to this particular stage, you can check that in a link that should be on your screen at this time. Let's have the reading of our base scripture that helps us in our series, taken from Ephesians chapter 3 verses 14 to 19 and chapter 4 verses 15 to 16. Ephesians chapter 3 Verses 14 to 19 says, I bow my knees before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named, that according to the riches of his glory, he may grant you to be strengthened with power through his Spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you, being rooted and grounded in love, may have strength to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Ephesians 4 verses 15 to 16 tells us, Instead, we will speak the truth in love, growing in every way more and more like Christ, who is the head of his body, the church. He makes the whole body fit together perfectly. 
as each part does its own special work it helps the other parts grow so that the whole body is healthy and growing and full of love father we come to you in the name of your son jesus christ and as we do so we love you we love you for who you are and who you reveal yourself to be and we're particularly grateful that you see it fit to express who you are in your son jesus christ right now then by the same spirit that rose him from the dead open our eyes to have an insight into the wonderful love that we see in the lord jesus christ and help us to grow deeper in this love not just to know it on a brain level or just a brain and a heart level but know it on, on a whole life level so that we can be transformed to be more like your son jesus for your honor and your glory we thank you that you'll do this at this time as we search your word we thank you for what you will do as we continue to look to you and give you thanks in jesus name yes jesus loves me for the bible tells me so are familiar words to a hymn that's often sung by children indeed i remember it as a child singing it clearly it is true that the bible expresses the love of jesus but it's worth seeing how that love is expressed and why the truth of the bible can be experienced today for this love is not just seen in one moving scene of sacrifice the love of jesus is expressed throughout the ministry as reported in the gospel accounts jesus is god reaching out to man for as we read in john chapter 1 in terms of who jesus is we're told in john that in the beginning was the word and the word was with god and the word was god and the word became flesh and dwelt among us so we should be able to see clearly that there's the aspect of who jesus is from the beginning and how awesome it is that God would reach us through Jesus to restore us back to himself. It's not just the fact that Jesus is reaching out to us. It's also the element of the kind of love that Jesus portrays in that relationship between father and son. There's that wonderful relationship that we see between father and son that is so impactful that all the son does is what he sees the father doing because the father loves the son and as the son loves the father he'll only do what is pleasing to his father so jesus displays to us in the relationship between father and son how a son honors his father how a son loves his father and he shows that by a son obeying the father that's further seen when we look at philippians chapter 2 where Paul, in highlighting the kind of relationship that he wants the church in Philippi to reflect, he refers to the example that we have of Jesus humbling himself and obeying even to the point of death on the cross. And this is why the love of God is remarked as a love that's not selfish or self-centered, but it's self-giving and it's serving others so that others can see that by the act of will, this is what you will do to love. So it's not about sentiment alone and it's not about your feelings. It's about a will that says, because of who I am and what I believe in, I will do this. I will express this. And Jesus does that in his relationship to the Father and expressing his love to others to the point of obeying his Father so that we can see that example and likewise have the same mind among us as believers so that we can see the example of jesus and practice that example in how we relate to each other noting carefully again that this is a love that's not just in word or in sentiment this is a word that acts we also see the love that reaches through the example that jesus has in the calling of his disciples when we look for example in luke chapter 5 verses 4 to 11 we're given this wonderful episode in jesus's calling of these fishermen and when he had finished speaking he said to simon put out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch and simon answered master we toiled all night and took nothing but at your word i will let down the nets and when they had done this 
They enclosed a large number of fish, and their nets were breaking. They signaled to their partners in the other boat to come and help them, and they came and filled both the boats, so that they began to sink. But when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. For he and all who were with him were astonished at the catch of fish that they had taken. And so also were James and John, sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. And Jesus said to Simon, Do not be afraid. From now on you will be catching men. And when they had brought their boats to land, they left everything and followed him. This remarkable episode in the life of Jesus highlights that the love of Jesus reaches out to others. And in the same way that you might recall back in the episode that we were looking at how God expresses his love from the beginning and it's seen in making and creating, here again we see how Jesus calls others and he calls them to construct them. So he says he's going to make them fishers of men. There's the love of Jesus that reaches people where they're at, doesn't leave them where they are, looks to change them and construct them to be everything that God has called them to be, such as the creative love of God and the shaping and making love of God that Jesus himself expresses and characterizes here. And it's beautiful because this is Jesus on their own turf, in their own space, showing his care and consideration for what matters to them and then using that as the launch pad for them to be involved in what matters to him, recognizing that what matters to him will change their lives forever so that they can recognize that what matters to him should matter to them and give them real life, such as the creative, shaping, making love of God in action through Jesus. So there's God reaching out to man through Jesus Christ, and then there's Jesus reaching man through the call to discipleship, but there's also this remarkable expression of the love of God in Jesus Christ as Jesus also reaches to restore. We're given this wonderful display of that in Jesus restoring Peter back to the ministry in John chapter 21 verses 15 to 19. When they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, Feed my lambs. He said to him a second time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, Tend my sheep. He said to him the third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was grieved because he said to him the third time, Do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my sheep. Truly, truly, I say to you, when you were young, you used to dress yourself and walk wherever you wanted. But when you are old, you will stretch out your hands and another will dress you and carry you where you do not want to go. This he said to show by what kind of death he was to glorify God. And after saying this, he said to him, Follow me. So notice how this has taken place after Peter has denied who Jesus is on three occasions, and Jesus has returned and has revealed himself to Peter. And now look at what Jesus is doing to restore Peter back to place. Here is love in action. Love does not condemn and throw away. Love looks to restore at every opportunity. Jesus restores him, not just restores him to be his brother, but restores him to serve. This is also why it's so powerful to see that forgiveness is an expression of love. And Jesus doesn't just tell us to forgive, he puts it in action. He restores, he's forgiven, 
this isn't the only area in which we will see Jesus restoring people. A lot of Jesus's ministry was about reaching those who had been cast out by society. In John chapter 4, we see the example of the woman at the well, who for her various conducts was considered an outcast, but because of Jesus reaching her and having a conversation with her, it turns her life around so that she's now a part of the community of God. She's a part of the family of God. She's now so embraced by this encounter with Jesus that she goes on to be one of the first most effective evangelists to share the good news of who Jesus is in her village, in her town area. And there are other episodes and incidents of Jesus reaching others who have been cast out to show the love of God in action. This is what the love of Christ looks like, to reach others wherever they are, in whatever condition they're in, to express to them, this is what God is like. This is what the love of God is like. This is what the rule of God is like. And we see this so brilliantly in the life of Jesus. It's a wonder to reflect on how the love of Christ reaches and it's even a wonder to see how that reaching love of Christ also looks to serve. So we consider carefully this fascinating episode in the life of Jesus in Mark chapter 2 verses 13 to 17. He went out again beside the sea and all the crowd was coming to him and he was teaching them. And as he passed by, he saw Levi, the son of Alphaeus, sitting at the tax booth. And he said to him, Follow me. And he rose and followed him. And as he reclined at table in his house, many tax collectors and sinners were reclining with Jesus and his disciples, for there were many who followed him. And the scribes of the Pharisees, when they saw that he was eating with sinners and tax collectors, said to his disciples, Why does he eat with tax collectors and sinners? And when Jesus heard it, he said to them, Those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick, I came not to call the righteous, but sinners. Here Jesus is criticized for the people that he hangs about with. But this is another opportunity to show that not only does love reach, but love serves. Jesus would later go on to explain to the onlookers that he hasn't come to be served, but he has come to serve. As he does that, Jesus presents such a powerful example to us to let us know what it is to really love. And in this episode, as he's criticized for who he knocks about with, we see that the love that reaches looks to serve those who are in need. So if you don't have a need, then you won't see how Jesus can meet that need. But the reality is that we all have a need. We're physically broken, we're socially broken, we're emotionally broken. And because of that illness, that sickness, that pain that we feel, we're in need of a physician. And so look at the love of Jesus to reach out and to extend that healing in relationship, in love, in kindness, as well as that healing touch that he offers, how he has come to heal. And how Jesus then has no problems with social outcasts, as people criticized him when he met Zacchaeus, for example. Jesus extends that love and shows that love so powerfully to say that today salvation has come to your home because of Zacchaeus' response to an encounter with Jesus. This is a love that looks to make whole those who are broken for whatever reason. And it even extends that when we see that episode of the resurrection of Lazarus and how Jesus reveals himself to be the resurrection and the life. People didn't understand why he really came and they didn't understand who he really was. But as they have an encounter with love, this real love, then they can see how this love transforms and brings life even in dead situations. Here is this Jesus then who expresses this love, a love that heals, a love that makes whole physically and internally and socially and emotionally in every aspect of life. Jesus expresses a love that comes to make whole and comes to give life. So he serves by healing and he also serves in this powerful example seen in John chapter 13 verses 1 to 5, 12 to 17 and verse 34. Now before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart out of this world to the Father, having loved his own who were in the world, 
he loved them to the end. During supper, when the devil had already put it into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he had come from God and was going back to God, rose from supper. He laid aside his outer garments, and taking a towel, tied it around his waist. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet, and to wipe them with the towel that was wrapped around him. When he had washed their feet and put on his outer garments and resumed his place, he said to them, Do you understand what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for so I am. If I then, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example, that you also should do just as I have done to you. Truly, truly, I say to you, a servant is not greater than his master, nor is a messenger greater than the one who sent him. If you know these things, blessed are you if you do them. A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also are to love one another. By this all people will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. What powerful love is this? This is a love that sees the great Lord and Master humbling himself as a servant to wash the feet of those he has come to help, those he actually has called to come alongside him. Here is a servant love. Here's that humble love that we were looking at previously. Here's that humility that we see in the example of Jesus. And it's deliberately set so that his disciples can see what this love looks like. And it's crucial that they see the example because it's by this that others will know that we are followers of Jesus. Not a general love, but the kind of love that Jesus has presented. This humble love, this servant love, this example that's so great and so inspiring to see because it says that there's no room for anyone to think that they're greater than anyone else. But there's every opportunity for us to humble ourselves before others and serve others, however great we may think we are. We're not too great to come and wash the feet of others, to come and do the menial for others so that they can see this is the love that Christ has for us. When we consider the cross and what God has done for us in Jesus Christ, we think about sacrifice and we think about love in action for no greater love has a man than this than a man should lay down his life for his friends. And this is the love that Jesus has shown to us. We also think, however, about a love that gives, a love that gives healing where it's necessary, healing completely, physically, mentally, emotionally, and the kind of healing also that corrects us, corrects wrong thinking, corrects us where we have veered away from the right path. Here is a love that provides provides all that we need even as Jesus expresses himself as the bread of life this is the love that gives here is a love that shines shines the light of truth to help us out of the darkness of lies and deception into the right path that gives us hope that there are brighter days ahead that are seen in the light of who Jesus is and in here is a love that gives life for Jesus is the life it should be clear to us now, even exploring this, beginning to explore it, that there is so much to consider in realizing that Jesus is love. We have barely scratched the surface of the great depths of the reality of who Jesus is as he expresses himself as the human form of love. And yet it's worthwhile, as Paul encourages us, the whole point of understanding how God's fit body plan operates is an ongoing quest to know this love that surpasses knowledge. In the light of that then, here are some concluding points I want us to uh, refer to and consider. When we talk about the love of God, we see it in action in the life of Jesus. Jesus does this and we can see this through his own relationship with the Father. We can see that love dynamic going on in the way that the Son loved the Father and the Father clearly loved the Son. That kind of love makes a difference 
to what we see and what we know to be God's kind of love. It's this kind of love that is not just between the Father and the Son, but sees the Son reaching out to look to include and bring in others and give hope to those who are hopeless and those who have been marginalized and pushed to the sides. He reaches them and brings them into the center, into the very heart of the love of God. This is the kind of love that Jesus shows, even with examples such as him being the one that looks out for that lost sheep or the lost coin or the lost son. Jesus' kind of love is defined as one that serves and supports others. It does not lord it over others. It looks to reach out and redeem those who respond in faith to this kind of love offered by the Lord Jesus Christ. It's a servant-hearted love. It doesn't lord it over others. It looks to come underneath others and really help them up along the way of life. So this is what we see in Jesus, but is this the love that we've experienced? Have we experienced the call, the conviction, the healing, the challenging, the submitting and the reach? Does that challenge how we go on to love others? Is it effective in how we're more prone to forgive than to hold bitter memories? Is it shown in how we're more eager to serve than to be served? How we're more interested in reaching to share with others than looking at myself? That's why it's a challenge for us to see what can we do to commit to exploring this love with others. Even as I ask those challenging questions, and these are questions that I too have to come to terms with, this isn't the kind of challenging question that should be off-putting or in any way condemning us. These kind of questions are to challenge us to know that this love is real, that we can embrace this love. And if you have not embraced that love before and you've never experienced it, then it is on offer. Jesus is real. He really did live. He really did serve. He really did show compassion to others. He fed them. He healed them. He restored them. I know that he's fed me, he's healed me, and he's restored me on so many occasions. I know that this love is real. And so if you've never experienced that love before, invite the Lord God to really show and manifest that love to you. And I know he will. And if you need any help and support with that, please contact us and we'll be only too happy to help you with that. And I know that there are other believers around you who can support you with that as well. In the light of this episode, then, here are some prayer points I want us to consider. First of all, let's praise God for Jesus, that this is divine love in human form. Let's also thank God for Jesus, that in him we have living proof of the way to really love. Let's ask God for Jesus, that we should be as humble and as compassionate as he is, as we look to him. Speaking of looking to him, let's seek God for opportunities to be shaped by the character and the approach of love that we find in our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. And finally, let's celebrate God for Jesus, who we get to spend eternity with. That's something worth celebrating God for, that this remarkable love that has changed our lives will be with us forever. Next time on Word Search, we'll be on episode 22, Remarkable Restorative Love. I hope you can join us for that to see what that's all about. Please remember to like this video and share it with your friends and loved ones. Also, subscribe to the channel, turning that notification bell on so that you can be informed of future episodes of Word Search. This is a production of Zion Awake Ministries. You can find out more about Zam in the description below. Please get in touch with us with any questions you might have about the episode or points you want to share. Use the comment section as well to share your views and your comments. All are welcome. Also consider supporting the ministry financially as every contribution 
really makes a difference. Indeed, thank you for whatever you give as it goes a long way to developing the service we offer to others. So please keep it going. If you want to do that, you can find that information also in the description below. My name is Christopher Dryden. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch and listen to this video. I hope it's been a blessing to you and really encouraged you. For here at Word Search, we love to find treasure in God's Word so that we can be hearers and doers of that Word for His glory. Until next time on Word Search, God richly bless you as you look to Jesus to live out His kind of love that serves you right. Shalom.